Ivan Nealon is the director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute and the author of Partitioning for Peace, an exit strategy, strategy rather for Iraq. He joins us now. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Iraqi forces have launched an offensive in the north of the country. So how crucial is it for the government to regain territory from ISIS? Well, I think it's pretty crucial. Uh, you know, the, the Iraqi army has fled and, you know, a lot of the units haven't uh, functioned very well. A lot of their equipment is now in the uh, uh, rebels' hands. So I think it's any victory they can get now is will shore up the morale and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, turn things around. The U.S. is using drones to protect American civilians and assets in Baghdad. How do you think the American involvement will expand from this? Well, unfortunately, I think the American involvement get, will get deeper and deeper. Uh, but because I think, uh, you know, the United States hasn't been too lucky in, the, in intervening in Afghanistan, Iraq, or Libya in recent times. So I, getting reinvolved in Iraq seems to be a uh, lost cause to me. I think uh, that the country will be effectively partitioned, uh, which is what I said was eventually going to happen either peacefully or unfortunately now we see it at war and that's what my book in, written in 2009 was all about and so uh, unfortunately uh, I was right about that and uh, I think well, I don't think the Iraqi military is probably strong enough to take back all the territory of ISIS you have the Kurds up in the northeast with their own who've expanded used the chaos to expand their own territory and then you have the Shia militias in the south which I think will fight the ISIS if they ever get down there and so I think you will have a partition of Iraq one way or the other. So you would actually see a, a, a formal splintering of the country? Well, I think, you know, what they probably ought to do is uh, an ideal would be you could still call it Iraq, but you have autonomous areas. The Kurds already have theirs, and they've had peace and tranquility when they ruled themselves. So if each group had its autonomy, uh, there wouldn't be a uh, – you'd have a weak central government, so they wouldn't fight over it because the history of Iraq has been – one group using the central government to oppress the others. Uh, previous to this, it was Sunni rulers, the last one of which was, was Saddam Hussein. Now we have a Shia ruler who's oppressing the Sunnis. And that's why this group is very brutal. But the reason they're getting so many gains is you have to have public support if you're a guerrilla force. And they get support in the Sunni areas because of the, uh, you know, the Shia government has been, been oppressive. Now, if they would rule their own territory, I think there would be a backlash of moderates as there was uh, when the U.S. was uh, uh, there against the al-Qaeda in, in Iraq, which is the, the same group, only it's morphed into this group that's called a different thing. So any time a group gets really extremist, uh, these people are good at attacking things and beheading people and killing people, but they're not good at ruling. And I think even if they do carve out a, an area, and they have done that already, whether they can rule it without a backlash among more moderate uh, factions is, is sort of doubtful, I think. And finally, Ivan, how well equipped are Iraqi forces to fight off the militants? Well, a lot of their equipment uh, is in the militants' hands when they ran the first time. Uh, they've still got, of course, uh, as you pointed out, tanks and helicopters. So they've still got equipment. If they can, the real key is: will they fight? And what, you know, will they use their training? There's a lot of corruption in the Iraqi military, and I think the ISIS group has paid some of the commanders to run away, and that's how it happened. This group is very sophisticated in its technique. It did the same thing in Syria. It uh, took key uh, oil facilities and, and then let the other groups. Uh, opposition groups take the brunt of the fighting, so it became stronger because it stayed out of the fight. And I think, to some extent, uh, they're doing that uh, here. But of course, there is fighting. But I also think there's been some bribery. So the corruption in the Iraqi army is is the big question. And I think uh, I think uh, this group is probably too weak to take Baghdad. It may take some parts of Baghdad, but I think also these uh, Shia militias who are very formidable against the U.S. occupation, they're coming up from the south, and I think they're, they would give this group a, a, a fight, much like Syria, where Hezbollah. Uh, really shored up the the poor Syrian military. They, these group, these militias, whether it's ISIS or the Shia militias or or Hezbollah in Syria, they fight for ideology. They're very zealous. They don't. They're not scared to die. Right. The Iraqi army, on the other hand, is corrupt, and uh, they'll you pay them, and they'll run the other way. All right, Ivan Eland, the director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute, and the author of Partitioning for Peace: An Exit Strategy for Iraq. Thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it.